ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਸਾਡੀ ਇਸ ਖਾਸ ਪੇਸ਼ਕਸ਼ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੈਂ ਹਾਂ ਰੁਪਿੰਦਰ ਕੌਰ ਹਾਊਸਿੰਗ ਅੱਜ ਕੱਲ ਇੱਕ ਵੱਡੇ ਮੁੱਦੇ ਵਜੋਂ ਉਭਰ ਕੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਆ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਜਿਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੱਡਾ ਰੋਲ ਅਦਾ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੈ ਮਾਰਕੇਜ ਪਰ ਇੱਕ ਟ੍ਰੈਂਡ ਦੇਖਿਆ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾਤਰ ਲੋਕ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਵੇਟ ਮਾਰਕੇਜ ਵੱਲ ਆਕਰਸ਼ਿਤ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਪਰ ਕੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਵੇਟ ਮਾਰਕੇਜ ਲੈਣਾ ਸਹੀ ਹੈ ਕੀ ਹੋ ਸਕਦੇ ਨੇ ਇਸ ਦੇ ਫਾਇਦੇ ਤੇ ਕੀ ਹੋ ਸਕਦੇ ਨੇ ਇਸ ਦੇ ਨੁਕਸਾਨ ਐਸੇ ਸਮੰਦੀ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਖਾਸ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਮੌਜੂਦ ਨੇ ਮਾਰਕੇਜ ਬ੍ਰੋਕਰ ਕੰਡਕਟ ਐਟ ਫਾਈਨੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਸਰਵਿਸਿਜ਼ ਰੈਗੂਲੇਟਰੀ ਅਥਾਰਟੀ ਆਫ ਆਂਟਾਰੀਓ ਜੈਨੀ ਹਾਟਸਨ ਹੈਲੋ ਜੈਨੀ ਐਂਡ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਪੀਟੀਸੀ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਫॉर ਹੈਵਿੰਗ ਮੀ ਰਿਪਿੰਡਰ ਵੈਰੀ ਨਾਈਸ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਹੀਅਰ ਟੁਡੇ ਇਟਸ ਅ ਪਲੇਜਰ ਡੈਫੀਨਿਟਲੀ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਥਿਸ ਗਰੋਇੰਗ ਟ੍ਰੈਂਡ ਆਫ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਵੇਟ ਮਾਰਕੇਜਸ ਬਟ ਫਰਸਟ ਰਨ ਅਸ ਥਰੂ ਵਾਟ ਇਜ਼ ਥਿਸ ਫਾਈਨੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਸਰਵਿਸਿਜ਼ ਰੈਗੂਲੇਟਰੀ ਅਥਾਰਟੀ ਆਫ ਆਂਟਾਰੀਓ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਇਜ਼ ਯੋਰ ਰੋਲ ਇਨ ਥੈਟ Sure great that's a great question to establish there's a, a financial services in general is uh, anything that is uh, non-bank finance mm -hmm. uh, uh, finance companies insurance uh, mortgage brokers credit unions and uh, pensions and uh, what we also look at is both sides depending on the uh, type of product depending on the sector sometimes there's a uh, prudential element which is making sure the companies are financially healthy and have right the the correct uh, controls and margins in place uh, to protect the their their consumer bases and my role is in an area we call market conduct and that's really about uh, the activities that our licensed individuals uh, partake and we measure their compliance against the requirements to make sure that the protections that are available to consumers in the acts that we administer mm -hmm are being uh, appropriately uh, administered through our mortgage brokers, brokerages, agents and administrators. Okay, if we talk about housing, housing is a big issue these days all over Canada and in Ontario too and mortgage plays an important role in that. So before we talk about the growing trend of pri uh, private mortgages, what is the difference between private mortgage and uh, traditional mortgage? Great question because a lot of people have never experienced even a mortgage let alone being able to distinguish between private and traditional. So generally I'd say that if you're thinking of a traditional mortgage, you're thinking of something you probably got um at a bank, one of the mm. banks or a credit union. You're thinking of something that's um uh fairly standard terms and conditions from one to the other usually a little bit of a uniqueness in a product but your 3 years your 5 year terms mm. with an interest rate uh that is uh compounded for the loan and what you're also um usually noticing with these is that there's higher qualification criteria uh similar to um other types of financial products in this case when we're talking about mortgages and housing The housing is a purchase. Yes. But the mortgage is the biggest debt you're likely to take on in your life. And so, uh what we what we look at from the traditional mortgage space is ensuring the repayment capacity by making sure that the borrowers who apply for these mortgages have an income enough to mm -hmm. satisfy the payments coming back that the property is in uh, in a good condition and also the sustainability and affordability of that it's a uh, the risk that that mortgage won't be mm -hmm. paid back and so there's a lot of scrutiny placed on uh the uh elements of creditworthiness the elements of capacity being whether you have enough income to pay it back and also the property so it's basically all about uh, like you qualify if you don't qualify for traditional mortgage you go for private mortgage but why financial services regulatory authority of ontario seeing growth in private mortgages great question uh, especially recently what we're seeing uh, over the last year with the rate increases um with the uh, bank of canada mm -hmm. overnight lending rate that has pushed up a rate that's called the stress test rate and the stress test rate is a measure that needs to be followed it's a guideline under the office of the superintendent of financial institutions and it needs to be followed by financial institutions to qualify you using your income but at an interest rate higher than the actual contract mm -hmm. that you're going to take so a lot of uh people are not able to qualify at that higher rate so they'd be able to pay their mortgage payments at their current level but if there were changes to the market that went up there the stress test builds in the the uh cushion so mm -hmm. to speak the challenge with that is that as these rates went up so did the stress test rates and it's much more difficult to qualify especially when you're looking at um fairly strict rules on how how you prove your income 
how, what kind of income is acceptable, and again, using that same income to satisfy a higher payment mm -hmm. amount than what the actual contract rate is. So because it's getting more difficult for the average person to qualify for the traditional bank type mortgage, mortgage brokers, brokerages, agents, are able to find alternate solutions. Mm -hmm. And that's where we call private. Now I will make a small distinction here that a private mortgage is a very big range. So there are institutions, sometimes called um, finance companies, sometimes uh, mortgage finance companies, sometimes they're called um, B lenders, let's say. And it's, it's to say that it's an alternative, but it's still a highly institutionalized mm -hmm. uh, uh, investor-based uh, lending system. It's fairly uh, consistent, and it's also uh, partially regulated through the activities taken on uh, for the uh, mortgage-backed securities activity that they do. When we speak about private mortgages and keeping an eye on something that might be different and this uh, campaign to make sure everyone's knowing what they're getting into is less institutional and more private and uh, private individuals mm -hmm. who are actually the in investors in these mortgages. So um, the scale can go from highly institutionalized to uh, someone who instead of perhaps putting their money into a GIC might want to invest it somewhere else and uh, into a mortgage is somewhere they can do that. But as you mentioned, this can be an alternate. So uh, this should be considered only as a short term gap or in the long term too? It's a, uh, a really important to think about real private mortgages. Uh, especially in, in current economic times where there's a little bit of volatility and we're not, mm -hmm. in, uh, we're not entirely sure where things will go. Private mortgages are intended to be usually a stopgap or a temporary measure, just like you've said. So mm -hmm. uh, usually we see one to two years. Uh, they are uh, a little bit more focused on the property value than they are on um, the income of the individual. Not to say that you don't need income to be able to, to mm -hmm. qualify, it's just the the scrutiny and the level of uh, proof and what types of income may be much more flexible. So if you're going into a private mortgage, uh, it should really only be until you're able to exit out either into a more institutionalized alternate lender or back into the, the banking sector or the financial services sector. So there should be an exit strategy? Absolutely, every time. Um, and uh, it's really important to make sure that you understand whether the exit strategy is based on you doing anything mm -hmm. to achieve it. A fairly common scenario is perhaps um, you're still on probation at work or you don't have a long history of being uh, at a specific um, employment. Uh, or sometimes often you find with um, folks who work on contract uh, gig work is really popular mm -hmm. now. Traditional lenders will be looking for a long history to average out to make sure that they can count on the level of income. So uh, in these situations, if you're at a private lender, typically once you're able to show that history, mm -hmm. you don't need that private lender with the added flexibility anymore. You can move into a uh, more traditional space because you're able to prove it now. Um, sometimes we also see credit repair uh, so perhaps your credit has taken a bit of a uh, hit or you don't have mm -hmm. much credit at all, so you can't qualify with a traditional lender. You might say, okay, let's use this private mortgage for one year or a two-year term, and during that year, I'm going to take steps to improve my credit. And so when we're speaking of the exit strategy, in that case, the exit strategy is improve credit to return mm -hmm. to traditional lending. But what does that mean? Do I just get the private mortgage and I just sit and wait? Or are there steps I should be taking to actively improve my credit to help ensure that I can achieve my exit strategy? But are these private mortgage lenders regulated? Private mortgage lenders are regulated in the sense that uh, they must either have a mortgage brokerage license mm -hmm. themselves, which is the license that authorizes private lending, um, or they must work through a brokerage that is licensed mm -hmm. uh, to have as an intermediary. Um, but the lender themselves, um, that is uh, really up to the lender in terms of what interest rate they want to offer, what terms and conditions they set, and they set those individually based on the risk that they see in, in, in the file. Okay, Jenny, we'll stop here for a short break and we'll continue this conversation after a short break. We'll be right back after a short break.
Welcome back after the break. We are here with Jenny Hudson uh, from Financial Services Regulatory Authority of Ontario. So, uh, to understand more, Jenny, tell us what are the pros and cons of private mortgage and traditional mortgage. Generally speaking, with a traditional mortgage, some of the best, some of the highest known uh, pros would be that because they're qualifying at a higher uh, higher level, mm -hmm. uh, the the risk is mitigated a little bit more, and so a traditional mortgage is typically able to get you the lowest rates and the best terms and conditions, such as. Uh, how much lump sum payment you can submit per year, the changes you're allowed to make with your payments and so on, um, and the restrictions around what you can do with the mortgage. In terms of uh, the uh, con on that side really is about it's hard to qualify, mm. it's hard to get that. On the private mortgage side, uh, by contrast, you have uh, pros in the area of speed and flexibility. So it, it is often much easier if you've got a really tight deadline, you absolutely have to close your mortgage in, in you know, four days mm -hmm. in, in one week. It's hard to get a traditional lender to be able to go through all of the processes uh, in order to meet that timeline. But a traditional, um, uh, a traditional lender is really working through a, a large system mm -hmm. of infrastructure. A private lender is usually able to turn around uh, an offer uh, commitment and move towards closing much faster. So private mortgages do typically tend to be much faster in as short as two days even. And uh, you also find uh, flexibility in the types of income accepted and the level of scrutiny on that income. More focus is placed on the asset itself, which is the property that's being used uh, as the collateral for the mortgage. So this is a faster process. So that could be the one reason of this growing trend? It absolutely could be part of the reason of the growth. There's a lot of factors that blend into it. So we have more people who aren't qualifying uh, at uh, traditional bank rates, mm -hmm. but you also have uh, you know, the, the, the residual effect of a very hot market. And so there are a lot of offers that were placed it's, um, into the market that were with no conditions or the conditions were waived very quickly. And so there have been folks who have uh, made a commitment to a certain closing date mm -hmm. and then have not had enough time to secure traditional lending and private lending has been able to be right there for them. So that could be um, one of the reasons we've seen a bit of a rise there as well. So what do you suggest in the present scenario what we are seeing in the market these days? Like if someone has a booked a house in pre-construction and they are getting the appraisal less than the house value. So what do you suggest then? I definitely think that working with a licensed mortgage professional is uh, a really good option here because uh, the, the, the mortgage broker or agent uh, from the brokerage is able to assess your needs and circumstances against a, a larger suite of products that are available from the same banks that you can go to yourself, mm -hmm. but also all the way down to individual private lender arrangements and investors that they have. and. Um, especially if, if time is, is of the essence uh, and uh, if the value has come down, there's a little bit more flexibility from a private lender to hedge their own risk, mm. right? So they'll look perhaps at the history of the property value and make their own assessment on how, how, how much risk they're willing to take and they are more likely than a traditional lender to be able to say, I will do this, absolutely. I do believe that the value is going to come back up mm -hmm. and I have faith in that. To balance that risk, the interest rate is going to be a little bit higher, which is where sometimes we talk about some of the some of the challenges or some of the differences that we don't necessarily know if we've never experienced private mortgages. So the, um, the rates are usually a little bit higher. Uh, there are fees involved where you typically wouldn't see the same kinds of fees um, with a traditional mortgage mm. and uh, you also see that uh, the terms are short and there's no guarantee necessarily that that lender will renew in the one year, right? Which is another reason yeah. why that exit strategy is really mm. important because uh, with traditional lending you can generally assume that as long as you've been making your payments, you'll be able to get a renewal from that mm -hmm. lender for another term. With private mortgages, it really depends on uh, the time of that, uh, that maturity of your mortgage. So it's possible that the private lender you were with for the last year, mm -hmm. if you haven't reached your exit strategy, they may not be able to offer the next year. Mm -hmm. And in the private mortgages, uh, one also get like variable and fixed rate? 
you do see, um, I mean, it's certainly flexible and uh, private mortgage uh, lenders, investors uh, can make any terms that they like. So if it works for them to, mm. to work on a variable, uh, then it can. Usually you see fixed uh, and usually uh, what you also see with the with the payments is that the payments are based on what we what would be an interest only mm -hmm. payment. So the payments you make every month just cover the interest for borrowing the money. So if you start at a mortgage of five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, for example, for a year, and you're making interest only payments, at the end of a year, the balance is still going to be five hundred thousand dollars. So that's another reason why you want to keep an eye on. Well, how long do I want to yeah. do this? Because if you're not chipping away at that equity. If you stay two years and three years and four years, and if you consider mm. the idea of you know uh, higher rates and added fees and costs, that can get very expensive to maintain over a long term. Okay, what are the key questions a homeowner should ask their mortgage broker if they are going for a private mortgage? The absolute number one question I think that would uh, uh, would be right right at the top there would be, why is this private mortgage right for me? Right. So not only in that question is built up not only the idea of why is this specific mortgage right for me and my mm. circumstances, but also inherently why is private mortgage the right solution rather than traditional. So your, your mortgage professional should absolutely uh, be ready and able to answer for you. Number one, why private mortgage mm. is the solution and not other options and should be able to articulate to you the, the the needs of yours that the product they're recommending matches up to. So uh, you needed a certain uh, loan to value amount. You need a cert you only have so much down mm -hmm. payment, let's say. So you absolutely need to get up to this much money in the loan. If that's uh, the requirement, you need to you need to be able to negotiate that and a mortgage professional who can explain to you how they're able to satisfy a specific need with the product they're offering. That's a person who's lining up the benefits of the product with the consumer's needs. But as you mentioned earlier that rising inflation and rate of interest could be the reason that uh, there is a growing trend of private mortgages. Is that the only reason we are seeing because rising inflation and rate of interest are rising only from the past one year? Yes, so I think there's a, an element as well of people who are becoming more confident and comfortable with mm. the idea of using non-bank financial services. Uh, and uh, there is a lot of, there has been in Ontario especially, a lot of history of uh, alternate investments available. We also see that there are newer and uh, more mortgage investment corporations that are uh, set up and these are uh, these are regulated under the Securities Commission, but essentially it is uh, a, investors into uh, a corporation and then that corporation becomes a lender of certain mm -hmm. types of products uh, and mortgages uh, are one of them in, in the case of a mortgage investment uh, corporation. So there's more of these companies. Uh, people are becoming more comfortable with the broader range of private mortgage services. We also have the rising interest rates uh, and inflation and affordability is becoming mm -hmm. a lot tougher for folks. And uh, we also have a lot of people doing a lot more uh, online research. And so uh, perhaps you know, 30, 40 years ago, you would have gone straight to your bank because that's what everyone does. Yeah. Uh, these days we have a, a lot of folks who are doing online research on their own first. And we also have a lot of people in Ontario who are newer to the province mm -hmm. and newer to the Canada. And so uh, sometimes uh, the, the immigration rate can actually affect how much of a certain t product type you're seeing mm -hmm. because uh, it's, it's a way to get into the market without necessarily having to meet the criteria right at the bank level, which you may not be able to do if you've recently arrived. And it's a faster process too, that could be the one reason. So how is FSRA educating the consumers? Uh, we have launched a consumer education campaign specific to private mortgages, and it's really about what you need to know. So it's, it's certainly not a suggestion that you should not get a private mortgage. Private mortgages are a great solution for circumstances where the features of private mortgages mm. really fit the needs of the, cons uh, the consumer. Uh, so we're, we are not suggesting that you should not. What we uh, really want people to know is that it's different, especially if perhaps the whole mortgage process uh, is something you've experienced only traditionally mm -hmm. before. So the, what we're doing to educate consumers is 
shows like this and uh, being able to spread as much information as we can and a dedicated website that talks specifically to consumers about top questions you should ask your mortgage professional mm -hmm. if they're recommending private mortgages to you. The key differences that you're going to see and also providing uh, example scenarios of being able to see, okay, here is a scenario of someone who took a private mortgage for this reason. This was their exit strategy. This is what happened. And uh, being able to see how it actually can play out. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's available at uh, www.fsrao.ca forward slash private mortgages. Well, Jenny, thank you so much for coming to our studio and sharing this important information about private mortgage and traditional mortgage. At the end, would you like to add anything for our viewers? Sure. I think what I'd say is that it's absolutely okay at any time to ask your mortgage professional, why is this right for me? And can you take a moment to explain for me what I'm getting myself into and what risks there mm -hmm. are? Now, these are requirements that they are meant to tell you, of course, but sometimes these things can be very fast and it's absolutely okay to slow down and say, let's pause. I wanna make sure I really understand what I'm getting into. Thank you so much and we wish you all the very best. Thank you Thank so you. much. So as you said, khas kal baat private mortgage the traditional mortgage the bare ummeed karde ha sari ek khas kal baat tohanu pasand aayi hovegi filhal mainu deyo ijazat tusi rakho apna khayal te desh duniya diyan khabran layi bane raho PTC de naal